What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. The name, of course, is Jason Joseph. This is play-by-play -play with J.J. Philly. He's taking on the Cardinals tonight at uh, Bush Stadium to start off a three-game set. It's 77 degrees over in St. Louis, Missouri, and we're about ready to get underway. So Miles Michaelis will be taking the mound for the Cardinals, and he's throwing uh, his four-seamer about 26% of the time. Also uh, does a really good job with utilizing that curveball on two strike counts and the changeup as well. They're trying to throw that about 5.5% of the time. So he's on the bump in the Phillies lineup. We'll, we'll get you that right now. Phillies have Kyle Schwarber leading things off. And he'll be batting in the leadoff spot. And then you got Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott, Nick Astianos, Brandon Marsh, Garrett Stubbs, and Johan Rojas. So Schwarber going to start things off, hitting 250 on the season. Michaelis is getting ready to to throw the first pitch here to start off the first inning, and we'll be ready. Here's the first pitch. It's a fly ball hit out the deep center field. But it'll stay in the yard, though, just in front of the track and making the catch is Walker for out number one. Huh. What's up, Katie? What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. Thanks so much for tuning in on here. Y'all are the best, as always. So Schwarber just flew out to center field. And coming up to bat is Trey Turner, who's on a, uh, he's actually on an 11-game hitting streak here at Bush Stadium. Hitting 222 though, on the season, and he stares at a 94-mile-per-hour pitch on the inside corner. So, Michaelis on the bump. The 0-1 on the way. It was a slider that just misses. So, that makes the count now 2-1-1. Uh, one and one. So, Schwarber, Turner, Harper, Bohm, Stott, Castellanos, Marsh, Stubbs, and Rojas as the 1-1 is lined over to short. And a nice little quick play there by Wynn. And there's two away. It was a hot shot right to him. So Michaelis, so far with the Cardinals, he's 80, he's, uh, 80 and 63. He's had 32 or more starts in every season. He was not injured or sidelined by COVID-19 protocols. But he's a two-time NL All-Star. As will face Bryce Harper here. And Harper looks at the slider and it. Just misses, according to the home plate umpire. Michael Wilson, two starts this season, is 1-1 one and one with a 6.10 ERA and nine strikeouts. The pitch on the way, inside by a hair. So Schwarber flew out to center. Turner lined out to short. And the 1-1 one one is a slider that's at the knees for a called strike. Just on the inside corner. Wow, are they swinging at every first pitch? Harper didn't swing at the first pitch. The one-two on the way. It's up high. Maybe on bat-to-bat -bat pitches, though. Harper has six homers at Bush Stadium in just 28 games, and he's been a very good hitter here. The two-two on the way is upstairs for ball three. Bone waits in the on deck circle. Michaelis with nine pitches so far. The count is full. Three seconds left on the pitch clock. And the next pitch is low and outside for ball four. Nice at bat there by Bryce Harper. And coming up now is Alec Baum. So defensively for the Cardinals from one through nine, it's Michaelis on the mound. Herrera is catching behind the plate today. Over at first is Goldschmidt. Gordman's at second. Arenado's at third. And Wynn is over at short. And then out in the, and then from left to right, it's Donovan, Scott, and Walker. As Baum looks at a slider over at the knees for a called strike. Phillies in their gray Away uniforms with the red letters on both the front and the back and the numbers as well. Gray tops, gray bottoms. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Boom, just swung on and missed at that 93-mile-per-hour pitch. It's 5 for 7, lifetime versus Michaelis. There's Ali Marmo, who's in his third season as the manager for the Cardinals. No balls, two strikes. Harper's at first, and the 0-2 is outside and low. <sighs> All right. 
Hopefully you're all doing well and having yourselves a very, very fantastic day. What's up, Maddie? What is up, everybody that's here? Eric's here. What's up, man? The one-two on the way, and that's sliced foul. Well, the crew chief for tonight, you got Vic Carpaza behind the plate. You got Alex McKay over at first. Edwin Moskosko is at second. And Adam Hamari is over at third base. Billy's playing at Bush Stadium, starting off a three-game set against the St. Louis Cardinals. Michaelis on the bump, and he throws back over to first to keep Harper in check. Harper doesn't even go anywhere. Harper wearing the ski mask as well. Doesn't have it over his, uh, his mouth, just over the back of his head. Michaelis versus Bohm. Big matchup here. The one-two on the way is sliced foul. Good job by Bohm to just stay alive. Five pitches so far in this at-bat. Two straight foul balls by Alec Bohm. And Stott waits in the on-deck circle. The Eclipse didn't even get dark there. Oh, boy. Michaelis gets set from the belt and throws the one-two just an inch above the plate. Or above the zone, I should say, for ball two. <sighs> Two outs in the top of the first. Two balls, two strikes. Michaelis getting ready to throw from the stretch again, and the 2-2 two -two is low. Good job by Bohm not to bite. They do try to check his swing, but they say he did not go. And that just came on. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs in the top of the first inning. Five seconds left on the pitch clock, and the 3-2 on the way is fouled off again. <clears throat> so Schwarber flew out the center. Turner lined out to short, and Harper got on with a walk. Three balls, two strikes to Bohm here. And a 3-2, it misses down low again, and outside for ball four. And Al gets on with an, a back-to-back -back walk. So now Stott is going to come up to the plate, and the Phillies are going to try to take the lead here. So, interesting uh, that the Phillies, uh, the, 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 so the Phillies, they took two of three to the Washington Nationals. They did lose yesterday afternoon's game, and they were trying to go for the sweep. As Stott steps into the box, and he looks at the curveball at the knees for a strike. He's reached base safely. In his last eight starts. So we got Harper over at second. We got Bohm at first. There's two outs. We're in the top of the first inning. The 0-1 on the way. Line drive over towards the second base side. Played on the bounce, though, and the flip over to first is in plenty of time. And the inning comes to an end. Good play by Nolan Gorman. Uh, two runners left. Uh, no runs. And we go to the bottom of the first. Mm. All right. Oh, what's up, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well and having yourselves a very fantastic day. Of course, the name is Jason Joseph, and uh, yeah, I'm going to put this up. So we go to the bottom of the first. Uh, Donovan will be leading things off. Goldie is batting second. I want to make sure I have this correct. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icons, and that way you'll know when I go live. Herrera is going to be starting today for, uh, for Contreras. Burleson's going to the DH. Then you got Walker and Wright. Went over at short. And Scott, the second out in center. Two stranded. Yep. Did I watch WrestleMania? No. I didn't have time. Did not have time to do that. Ugh. <sighs> Phil a Phil here. Yeah. Those are 17th in hitting and 15th in on-base percentage. That's crazy. Yep. That is really, really wild. <sighs> let's uh, put the... Let's put this on. Let's put this on. How many people do we have? We have 23 people on here watching. Cool stuff. 
Very cool stuff. What's up, Elder? You, how you doing, man? How's everybody doing on here? Appreciate you all so much for being here. So Brendan Donovan will be leading things off. Then you got Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Gorman, Nolan Arenado, Yvonne Herrera, Al Burleson, uh, Jordan Walker, Mason Wynn, and Victor Scott II all in the lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. They're going to be facing Spencer Turnbull as Donovan will look at a, a pitch that's way outside for ball one. Turnbull went five innings in the last game that he started and had seven strikeouts and no walks allowed as he throws the 1-0 just a little bit low. It was at 91 miles per hour. Donovan leads the team, the Cardinals that is, in average on-base percentage and slugging percentage. He's had a pretty good season so far. The 2-0 pitch that slapped foul. Turner's playing over towards the second base side because they're playing him the pole. Two balls, one strike to Brandon Donovan. Turnbull is on the mound. Trying to get another win for the Phils. The 2-1 on the way. Grounder rolled over towards the first base side. Harper has it and doesn't even have to flip it over to anybody. And they'll take it all the way to the bag for out number one. Phillies starting pitchers over their last seven games have posted a 2.68 earned run average. And uh, opponents have uh, an OPS of 569 against them. So they've been doing a good job at just making the correct pitches in the zone. And, uh, you know, they've they've really done an awesome job at just uh, dominating the strike zone and also coming up with very timely pitches. Here's Goldschmidt up at the plate and a slice the first pitch foul. It was a 91-mile-per-hour heater right down Broadway. Defensively for the Phillies, they got Stubbs behind the plate. He's uh, the battery to Spencer Turnbull. And then over at first base, it's Harper. Second base, it's Stott. Third, it's Bohm. And at short, it's Turner. The 0-1 to Goldschmidt. There's a fly ball hit out to right field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is a foul ball, though. JT has the day off. And then from left to right for the Phillies, it's uh, Marsh out in left, Rojas in center. And in right, it's Castellanos. We're in the bottom of the first. Cardinals up to bat. Goldschmidt is a career batting average of 250 against the Phillies with 11 long balls and 40 RBI. One out in the bottom of the first. Turnbull facing Goldschmidt. He's ahead in the count 0-2. Four seconds left on the pitch clock. Turnbull winds up, kicks, fires, and throws it upstairs for a ball. Ugh. Monday Night Raw is coming on. <laughs> nice. I'll see you later, dude. Thanks for stopping by. The one-two on the way. It sails low and outside for another ball. So the count is now two and two to Goldschmidt. Goldie is uh, this season only one homer and six RBI with a 200 average. He's now 36 years old. Actually born in Wilmington, Delaware. The 2-2 two -two on the way for uh, Turnbull is swung on and missed. And Goldschmidt strikes out. Turnbull gets the first strikeout of the day. And there's two gone. Nice. All right, sounds good, man. So two up, two down. We're in the bottom of the first. The Cardinals who the Phillies are facing today, of course. They uh, did lose uh, yesterday's game to the Marlins. The Marlins ended up getting their first win. And speaking of the Marlins, they're now down 7 nothing versus the Yankees. It's in the bottom of the eighth inning. There's Nolan Gorman, who has 43 homers before the age of 24. It's behind Joe Medwick and Albert Pujols, just from a Cardinal standpoint. First pitch, there's a fly ball hit out towards right field. It's not that deep, though. Going towards the alleyway is Roas, and I'll make the diving catch. Well, the inning comes to an end. It's a 1-2-3 inning for the St. Louis Cardinals. And we go to the top of the second. Philly's coming back up to bat. Roas doing a good job at just putting the glove down low and diving 
And there's the first inning. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Uh, all right, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, if you're if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. By all means, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, man. I thought I said that before, but uh, I guess I did not. So I do apologize about that. But uh, yep, I hope that you're all doing well and having yourselves a great day. What's up, Larry? What's going on, everybody that's here? Um, he just subbed and you snubbed him. I didn't snub him. I I I, I uh. I, f I forgot to, if I didn't, if I didn't say thank you, I do apologize about that. I do. Mm. I'm stuck at Domino's. Uh, they gave my order th to the wrong customer and have to remake mine. You like Domino's? I like Domino's. Huh. Here's Castellanos who takes a strike. Snowball's one strike. Castellanos just hitting a buck 33 on the season, but he'll ground this one up the middle. A sliding stop by Wynn. Throw over to first is in time. Goldschmidt had to actually dive forward for the ball and keep his right foot on the bag. And Tom uh, Thompson, I don't know if he's going to challenge this or not. He says hold it for a second. That was a tough play, though. So Wynn had to make a diving stop. And, uh, just threw it a little bit over towards uh, Goldschmidt's l right side. And Goldschmidt, did he keep his foot on the bag? It looked like he did for a second. He, I think he did. I think he did. The question is not if he beat it out or not. question is, is he out? And he was. Here's Brandon Marsh who looks at the strike all the way. Marsh hitting 280 on the season with two homers and five RBI. Michael is still out there on the bump. Neo one misses inside and low for ball one. It's a slider at 88 miles per hour. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Marsh swinging a miss on the four-seamer at 92 miles per hour. The Reds, they're up eight to nothing against the Brewers. We take a look at some of the other out of town scores. The Pirates up five to two versus the Tigers. The one two is inside and just a little bit high for ball two. We're in the top of the second inning. Miles Michaelis going up against Spencer Turnbull here at Bush Stadium. The two two on the way. Swing and a miss. And Marsh strikes out. So two up, two down for the Phillies in the second inning. There's his free marsh. <laughs> mm. Here's Garrett Stubbs. He's batting in the eighth spot, playing for JT today. So JT has the night off. First pitch to Stubbs. It's a curveball that's at 75 miles per hour, just at the knees for a called strike. Huh. It's a beautiful day at Bush Stadium. Just uh, 75 degrees, they said, on the uh, NBC Sports app. The 0-1 is at the knees for a strike two. And now Stubbs will call for time here. Hopefully you got to see the lun uh, the uh, solar eclipse today. It was really beautiful.
The 0-2 to Stubbs, swing and a miss, back-to-back strikeouts, and that's going to end the inning. So 1-2-3 go the Phillies as they're retired, and they go to the bottom of the second, Cardinals coming back up to bat. So why did Bryce have the bal- the balaclava on if it's warm? I don't know. I have no idea, man. You'll have to ask. You'll have to ask him. What's today? Today's April 8th. Um, oh, this is different. Okay. I wanted to look at that. Uh, so yeah, man, I hope that you're all doing well, um, and I hope you're having yourselves a very fantastic day. Today is, uh, Monday, April 8th, um, yeah, I don't really, like, have, like, too, too much else to report. I do want to hear what your vinyl score predictions are on this, uh, Phillies game, and I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. Please make sure that you comment down below, um, you know, and give me your thoughts about the final scores of this game today. (sighs) <sighs> Where did you watch that crazy Sixers game last night? Um, I didn't watch it. I actually had a very long day yesterday. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I called my first uh, softball game. I called my first game in person in over a year. And uh, I'm happy I did it. I'm really happy I did it. It was a big learning experience for me. And it took a lot out of me yesterday. It really did. Lots of uh, lots of things to learn from that because that was my first time that I was on TV for uh, for ESPN Plus. But it didn't go as planned, and uh, you know I learned a lot. And hopefully the next time I do it, it'll be a lot better. So Hank Aaron, they were talking about Hank Aaron. The 1982 Baseball Hall of Fame inductee, um, but uh, they're looking, they're, they're they're talking about his stats. He batted 305, had 755 homers in his career as well. So we're in the bottom of the second. Here's Arenado takes that one in there for a strike. Final score prediction is zero zero. <laughs> so Turnbull goes back out there for his second inning of work. And the 0-1 pitch is low for ball one. Yeah, I yeah, so I uh I took a night off last night. I don't know if you saw my post hardcore for all, but I I, I said that I was taking the night off just to relax. So I didn't get to watch the game or anything. The count is one and one to Arenado. Takes the next pitch inside for ball two. I was uh, going back today, and I was actually listening to a little bit of some Vince Scully. And I really, really like how he was able to paint a picture for baseball. So the 2-1 on the way. It looked a little outside, but it's a called strike. According to Vic Carpaza, it was on the outside corner. But uh, I bring that up because... You know, he brought up a really funny story about uh, the Dodgers uh, manager at the time about a five years ago as the 2-2 is lined out into left field. It's a fair ball as it goes down towards the line. Marsh has to play it on a couple of bounces, and Arenado gets on with a double. So it's a leadoff double to start off the bottom of the second, and Arenado is able to get on. But the thing is, is that Vin did a really good job at telling stories while the action was going on. And he really did give you, like, a very good idea on how you could be encapsulated by a story, but, like, still remember that there's a pitch going on. As Arenado's over at second, the first pitch in this at-bat to Herrera sliced foul. That's something that I kind of want to look, want to work a little bit more on, and it's a little bit hard on here because, you know, we it's more interactive. Herrera batting three hundred on the season with a homer and five RBI. From the bottom of the second inning, no balls, one strike. Turnbull looks back over at second now, back to the plate. 
And the next pitch is popped out over towards center field. Making the catch is Rojas. Didn't even have to move one bit. But there's one out. So Herrera's retired. Arenado doubled down the line. And Herrera flied out to center. And now here comes Burleson. He's batting on the left side. Burleson hitting 172 with two RBI on the season. Arenado still leading off over at second base. Turnbull looks back over at him. And the first pitch is grounded over towards the first base side. Harper had to communicate with Stott, but Stott has it, and he throws it over to first. And Turnbull had to cover the bag, and he did. So he ran over from the mound. It's not That's really not an easy play. The runner from second does go over to third, but Stott and Harper had to communicate because Stott was playing uh, the batter to a pull over towards that side. And Harper thought that maybe he was going to get it. But then Turnbull had to come on over, and he did. He did a good job there. Here's Jordan Walker. So we have time called. Stubbs wants to have a conversation as he walks over to the mound with his mask on. And he'll talk things over with Turnbull here. Giving him a little pat on the back as well. Pretty big crowd at uh, Bush Stadium. Don't know how many in attendance, but... It's a pretty solid crowd. Sun is still out, still peaking on this uh, solar eclipse day. Today is April 8th. Here's Carpazzo who wants to go break up the conversation, and he will. So he looks over at Stubbs and says, you got to get back, and he puts his right hand on the back of his mask. <laughs> Walker will step into the box. He's not in the box just yet, but he's wearing a right elbow guard. He has 16 homers uh, before turning the age of 22. Not on the season. That would be insane. Arenado's over at third, 90 feet away from the bag or from home plate, and the first pitch is way outside for ball one. You're doing it now. What, doing a good job at, like... Telling the story, but making it seem seamless. Yeah, it's a skill. I gotta, that's the one thing I really want to make sure I get better at, especially for radio. One ball, no strikes. Turnbull kicks and delivers, and it swung on and missed. I mean, that sweeper was at least a foot off the plate, and Walker still swung at it as if it were closer. Walker even had his eyes on it, even after he swung. I was like, how did I swing at that pitch? The 1-1? One, one? And it's up high. So two balls, one strike. The Jordan Walker is hitting a buck 94 on the season. Great athlete, though. Out in right field for the Cardinals. The 2-1 delivery. Jack swing. Did he go? And the first base umpire says, yes, he did. That pitch was sort of in the same spot. It didn't have as much oomph to it, but Walker certainly went around. And the count is even at two apiece. Lots of twos on the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two seconds left on the pitch clock. 22 pitches for Turnbull, and the 23rd is down low and outside. At an 86-mile-per-hour sweeper. And the count is now full. Wynn waits in the on-deck circle. He had a really nice defensive play in the last inning to take away a base hit from Nick Castellanos. 3-2 on the way. That misses outside and low, and Walker wins the battle and gets on with a walk, and that'll put runners over at the corners. Well, we got the men's finals occurring tonight. Purdue will take on the Huskies at 9.20 p.m. Eastern Time. That should be a fun one. Unfortunately, I did not get to watch a USC face against the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday because I was calling a game. But I did get to watch those highlights, and, man, that was... That looks like that was an incredible match. 
Here's a sweeper that's outside and low to win. He steps in towards the box, and he's not batting on the right side. One ball, no strikes. Arenado is over at third. And over at first is Walker. The 1-0 pitch misses just by a hair outside for ball two. Still no score. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Turnbull so far with 26 pitches. Just as one strikeout, he did allow a double to Arenado. That's the only hit that he has surrendered so far. The 2-0 pitch. Just a fastball right down Broadway for a called strike. It's now a 2-1 count. Huh. Win this season with runners in scoring position. Is 0 for 5 with an RBI, a strikeout, and a walk. The 2-1 is slapped foul towards the first base side. So that'll make the count at 2-2. Two and two. Again, comment down below what your final score predictions are. I would really, really love to know. That'd be so cool. Scott, the second, waits in the on-deck circle. 2-2 on the way. There's a fly ball hit out to left field. Backing up, though, as Marsh gets a good read on it, and I'll make the catch. And the inning comes to an end. No runs, one hit, two men left. Let me go to the top of the third. No score at Bush Stadium so far. Philly's coming back up to bat. Mm. All right. <sighs> Turnbull overthrowing a few times in that frame. Yeah. I mean, he's a fifth starter. I can't really put a lot of, like, Stress on him, you know? I think that he, uh, I don't think that his role is supposed to be, you know, be like a top, like, three pitcher. I'm not saying that, that he's doing it like this, but I think that he has to just eat up innings, you know? I think that a good year for him is if he goes, like, 150 or so innings and, uh, Gives you like a 3.7 ERA. You know? But sure, it definitely is something to watch. You're not wrong about that. Definitely not wrong about that, but... It's an interesting point that you make. The Braves, they lead a 4 to nothing against the Mets. Braves are 6-2. and two And are 3-0 and oh at home. Mets, on the other hand, they're three and six in the NL East. And then the Reds. The Reds have a nine to three lead. Benson is up at the plate, has homered, also has a double, two runs scored, and a stolen base as well. Only two final scores today that we have are that the Yankees, they shut out the Marlins 7 to nothing as Roas steps into the box and takes the first pitch for a ball. The Guardians, they did win and shut out the White Sox 4 nothing. It's the 1-0 pitch to Roas. is lying down the left field line. It's a fair ball. And Roas will jog on into second and will round second, but he'll have to go back towards the bag. The throw was not made, though. Nice play, though, by Johan Rojas. Finally, he's able to get his first hit in the outfield. And it's an extra base hit. Philly's trying to capitalize here. And Rojas got a fastball, just turned right on it. Made some good contact with it. And you'll certainly take that for sure. Did a pretty good job of just pulling that pitch over towards the left field side. And now Kyle Schwarber will come back up for the Phillies. Phillies looking to strike first in the top of the third. Michaelis on the bump gets set above the belt, and the first pitch to Schwarber is popped up over towards the first base side. Actually, that will just uh, wind towards the outfield and calling everybody off is Gorman, and he'll make the catch right between Walker and Goldschmidt. So Schwarber just swung at the first pitch two times, or in two straight at-bats, I should say. First time he flied out to center, and this time he pops out. 
towards shallow right field. And Trey Turner, who lined out on the first pitch of his first at-bat, is coming up. Roas over at second, one out. And Turner lays off on a curveball that's outside and low. 35 pitches for Michaelis in this game so far. The 1-0 on the way is a slider. It's on the outside corner for a strike. So it's a 1-1 count now. Michaelis looks back over at second to keep Roas in check, and the 1-1 is lined foul over towards that little net area on the left field side at Bush Stadium. Turner hitting 216 on the season. Started off last year pretty cold. He's looking to try to get something going, though, as a layoff on the 1-2. Take it low and outside for ball two. Versus left-handed pitching this season, he is 5 for 18. And versus righties, he's 3 for 18. But he's hitting 167 against right-handed pitching. And 270 versus left-handed pitching. Next pitch is fouled back towards the screen. And we'll do it again. Turner has had struck out eight times in this month. And we're only on April 8th. The 2-2 on the way. Ground ball over towards the third base side. Back ended by Arenado. And he's not even going to have a play. Everybody's going to be safe. Roas didn't even go over to third. And Turner gets on with an infield single. You know that he has a lot of speed. Especially on those wheels of his. And Arenado was just like, I'm not even going to attempt to throw it. And that's how the Phillies get their uh, second hit of the day. And now Harper is coming up to the plate with his white batting gloves. Never know what he's going to bring in regards to those gloves. And I'll line this one over towards the right field side. It is a foul ball. If there's any sort of a chance that you want to try to get a run on the board for the Phillies, it is right now. Yeah, runners over at first and second. Rojas leads off over at second. Turner, who just got on with an infield single, is over at first. There's one out. We're in the top of the third. No score so far out in St. Louis. The 0-1. It's a strike on the inside corner. And the count is now 0-2. Looked a little bit inside. But nonetheless, Carpaza says it was a strike. And Michaelis ahead in the count. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Michaelis takes a quick breath. And the 0-2 pitch, line drive over towards the first base side. The flip over the second, there's one. Michaelis covers first, and he gets it back. And it's in time for a... That is going to go down as a 3-6-1 double play. And that is a rally killer. So we go to the bottom of the third. No runs. Two men left. And still no score at Bush Stadium as the Cardinals are coming back up to bat. Huh. Four, six, one, double play for Bryce Harper. Three, six, one, double play. Okay. Zach, what have I missed so far? Uh, if you look at the top right here, three hits, no runs. <laughs> that literally says it all. Not really too much. Turnbull's on the mound for the Phillies. Still doing an R.A. job. And on the bump for the Cardinals is Miles Michaelis, who just got out of the third inning with a double play. <sighs> if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell icons, and that way you'll know when I go live. The name, of course, is Jason Joseph. All right, this is Play by Play with JJ. I appreciate you all being here. And for giving me all your love and support. It really does mean a lot. Um, you know, yesterday I called my very first game uh, in person in about over a year. And I did it for 
a TV network, and that was really cool. But there was a lot that I learned. And I didn't do such a good job. Honestly, I really didn't. But, you know, what's really cool is that whenever you call a game, doesn't matter where it is or who it's for, but if you give yourself more opportunities, as long as you keep your head high, you learn from your mistakes. And uh, I bring that up because I think that uh, it's important to, from just a life perspective for other people to understand that not every day is going to be a good day, but it's always about how you bounce back. That's just a life thing. We're in the bottom of the third. First pitch is fouled over towards the first base side. Victor Scott, the seconds up at the plate. Hitting 083 so far on the season, looking for his first homer and his first RBI in a red and light blue uh, uniform. The 0-1 misses low. Turnbull out there for his third inning of work. He did miss Rojas' first hit. Larry just said that. Even though it technically wasn't his first hit, it was his first hit in the outfield. I'll say that. The 1-1 is swung on and missed. So it's 1-2 and two to Scott. On the bottom of the third. No score game so far between the Cardinals and the Phillies. The 1-2 by Turnbull. Decides to go with a curveball, but it's slow. Phillies will play at home against the Cardinals at the end of May, very beginning of June. So they play two three, uh, two three game sets against them this year. The two two on the way. It's a sweeper that also misses in the dirt for ball three, and that'll make the count full. Turnbull has gone two innings so far, has allowed just one hit, one walk, and one strikeout. 3-2 on the way. That misses inside. It almost hits Scott the second as he falls down, trying to dodge away from a breaking ball. And he'll get on with a walk. That's the second walk allowed today by Spencer Turnbull. They have just gotten him right on the the front side of the back foot. So they record it as a hit by pitch. That's how Scott gets on. Here's Donovan, Brandon Donovan, batting on the left side, and he looks at the strike. Stubbs will throw over to second base, and the throw is not in time to get the speed surge. Scott the second. That's Victor Scott the second. He leads MLB in sprint speed. I didn't even know that that was a stat. And the speed is 30 and a half feet. Thirty and a half seconds. The 0 one on the way to Donovan is grounded back up the middle. Turner was playing right behind the bag, throws over to first, and there's one gone. Victor Scott, though, goes over to third base, and he's now 90 feet away from scoring. But there is one out. They have a, f- a, f- a fanatic mittens giveaway that they're giving out against the Chicago White Sox when they come to town to play against the Phillies. And they look pretty cool. It's the first pitch to Goldschmidt's in their first strike. So Paul Goldschmidt, who has one homer on the season and six RBI, is 0 for 1 today versus Spencer Turnbull with a strikeout. The 0-1 is fouled back towards the screen. Goldschmidt has 341 homers, and amongst active leaders, that's third. So he's right behind Mike Trout, who has 372, and John Carlos Stanton, who has 405. 
The 0-2 on the way. Swing and a miss. And Goldschmidt goes down swinging for the second time today. Two down in the bottom of the third. Decided to go with an outside pitch. That was a good uh, pitch thrown by Turnbull, who has now 40 pitches on the day. 24 have been for strikes. 16 have been for balls. And here's Nolan Gorman who will step into the box over on the left side and will try to send a fastball over towards the seats in foul territory. He did fly out in the first. Turnbull facing Gorman here. The 23-year-old second baseman for the, the Cardinals. The 0-1 is fouled back towards the screen once again. So Gorman, born in Phoenix, Arizona, he's 6-1. Had a pretty good uh, couple of years with the Cardinals. Still a very young player. Played with them last year and has 43 homers in his career so far. The 0-2 is way up high for a ball. So one ball, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the third. So Scott, who got on with a hit-by-pitch, stole a base, and then advanced over to third on the ground out to short to make it one out. The one-two, though, to Gorman's up high and outside for ball two. So then Goldman, or sorry, Gold, Goldschmidt then struck out to make it out number two. And there's a runner over at third. So no score in the bottom of the third. Phillies taking on the Cardinals. Turnbull on the bump. And the 2-2 to Gorman is low and outside for ball three. Decided to go with a slider. And Gorman decided not to chase. There's a pretty good pitch. It looked pretty good to me too. But that's why I'm not at the plate. Arenado waits in the on-deck circle. Big payoff pitch coming up to seconds left on the pitch clock, and Turnbull calls for time really quickly as he'll take a very quick step off and try to reset here. So it's three balls, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the third. There's two outs. So runners over at third, and that is Scott. Gorman's at the plate. Cardinals up to bat. The 3-2 on the way. Popped foul right behind the plate and will do it again. If you are just tuning in, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button as well. I appreciate that very, very much. Dallas, what's going on? Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Turnbull gets set, has the ball behind his back, and now puts it in the glove. The payoff pitch. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. A changeup at 90 miles per hour that was headed towards the dirt, and Gorman went fishing. So we go to the top of the fourth inning. Philly's coming back up to bat. No runs, and one man left. That was Scott over at third for the Cardinals. Philly's coming back up when we return. The descriptions of that were actually pretty good. That was that was nice. Great pitch. Yep. Thanks, Snow. I appreciate that. Huh. JJ goal uh, goal Bo Bichette, three nothing Blue Jays. Goal. <laughs> goal. <laughs> I thought you were gonna shush me because Bo was up to bat. That's what I thought. If you are new to the channel, you're nailing it, my my man. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Um, Again, you know, they say that hungry dogs run faster. And, uh, you know, I was really, really bummed. I was really bummed about yesterday. But this is what makes it so great. And I'm I'm really blessed, and I do say this a lot, but I'm so thankful that I have a really strong community on here because this really does give me confidence, if anything. And you guys definitely help uh, lift me up in so many ways. And I am always going to be thankful for that. Always. 
means a lot. And I'm hoping that we give you the best quality of play-by-play all the time. And if we don't, always feel free to critique. Always feel free to let me know. You know? So, it was big. Hey, JJ, uh, good for you to take a day off yesterday. Everyone needs it now and then. Did you catch any of the crazy Sixers Spurs game? I did not. Here's how Boehm steps into the box and he stares at a slider. It was actually more of a fastball for a strike at the knees. Huh. Um, so the 0-1 is fouled back by Bohm. Michael is still out there on the bump, and it's an 0-2 count now. I don't know what this is, um, but I am taking a picture of this. They had a, a statistic about viewership. The 0-2 is inside, way inside for a ball. Snooter says, we always got you, JJ. Thank you. It means a lot. It does. One ball, two strikes. And the next pitch to, by Michaelis is grounded over to shortstop, bobbled by Wynn, but the throw over to first is in time. So Wynn just bobbled that, but did a good job at just making the right read and throwing a dart over to first. And there's one away. So Alec Bohm is retired, and Stott is up now to bat for the Fightins. He did ground out in the first. He's looking for some redemption here against Michaelis, who gets set right at the letters, gets the signs from his catcher, and the first pitch is a changeup that probably should have been called a strike, but Carpaza says that it's a ball. Just got the outer third of the edge. The 1-0 delivery. That was a good curveball thrown at 74, but it misses inside and low. Michaelis against the Phillies. This is now a seven start against them. He's two and three with a 4.63 ERA. The 2-0 pitch, a slider that's in there for a strike. And Stott was just holding all the way. 50 pitches so far for Michaelis on the night. The 2-1 delivery, sliced foul, and that'll find the seats. It was a 2-0 count, and Michaelis now fighting in this at-bat here to try to even the count. And he successfully does so. Base is empty. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Both teams combined have three hits on the day. The 2-2 to Bryson Stott. There's a fly ball hit out to left center field towards the alleyway, backing up and making the catch over towards the wall is the left fielder uh, Donovan, and he makes the easy catch. It wasn't really easy, but he made it look easy, I should say. (laughs) Certainly did. Had to turn over his shoulder his left shoulder, and just caught it right in front of the warning track. And now Nick Castellanos is going to come up. The pitch also was pretty high to the start that he was able to hit. And Castellanos will stare at a four-seamer that's just off the plate for a ball. Wouldn't be any fun without all of us. I agree. Uh, You guys really do make it fun. The pitch to Casti is a sinker on the outside edge of the plate for a strike. So there's two outs in the top of the fourth inning. Castellanos got robbed on a hit his last time up on a nice diving stop by Wynn over at short. The one-to-one pitch, check swing. Did Castellanos go? They say no over at first. Two balls, one strike to Castellanos. And the next pitch, there's a pop-up hit out towards shallow right field. Walker will come charging over towards his left side. He takes three steps and will catch it for out number three. Another 1-2-3 inning for the St. Louis Cardinals uh, pitching staff. And we go now to the bottom of the fourth. Cardinals coming back up to bat. Phillies and Cardinals scoreless so far. Hmm. Will the score stay under seven, says Big Snake? I think so. So I brought up the Hank uh, uh, Hank Aaron before, um, and, and they talked about him on NBC Sports Philadelphia, and I didn't really get to mention this, and I apologize, but uh, today was uh, the 50th anniversary of his 715th home run. And that's how Vince Scully popped into my head because Scully – as great of an announcer as he is, he, he got to call so many incredible baseball moments. They called him 
a baseball encyclopedia because he's been around for so many different things, and he got to see so much and call so many things, and one of them was Hank's uh, 715th home run. And that call is something that obviously is just one of the greatest all-time calls, in my opinion, in regards to just baseball moments. He was a part of another one, too. He was a part of a lot of them. But uh, the other one that really does stick out to me, too, of course, is Kirk Gibson's home run. Huh, but what's your favorite uh, baseball broadcasting moment? It doesn't even have to be from Vin Scully. It could be from Jack Buck. It could be from Joe Buck. It could be from anybody else. What's one that stands out to you? I uh, There's a lot that stand out to me, but... Those two, I'll keep them for now. I liked, uh, I liked Joe Davis's Bryce Harper swing of his life in, mo- in more recent times that I got to be around for. But there's a lot of really good iconic ones. Al Michaels had some really good baseball calls. There's so many. Will the score still be under seven? I think so. Huh. Here comes Arenado to the plate, and he takes a strike at the knees. Hawk Harrelson, you can put it on the board. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yep, that's a good one. Is Arenado who takes the next pitch for a ball. Just misses. Nolan doubled in the second. He's in 286 on the season, still hunting for his first homer. Also has four RBI. The one-to-one delivery. It's on the inside edge of the plate for a strike at 91 miles per hour. Good pitch thrown by Turnbull. One ball, two strikes to Nolan Arenado. With the bat just above his back shoulder in the pitch. Grounder hit over to third base. Boehm has it. Picks it up. Throws over to first. And there's one away. In the bottom of the fourth inning. Here comes Herrera to the plate. He's filling in for Wilson Contreras. One out in the bottom of the fourth. The first pitch is just on the inside corner for a strike. So Ivan Herrera, hitting 286 on the season with a 429 slugging percentage, one homer and five RBI. No balls, one strike. The next one is upstairs to make the count even at one apiece. Uh, so let's look at these. Okay, so Merrill Reese on Jake Elliott's 60-plus yard game winner against the Giants in football is... Uh, your favorite. That's not Kevin Kiermeyer's burner account. <laughs> the pitch by Turnbull is a sleeper that misses low and outside to make the count now two and one. He buried it. I wonder who said that. It's bedlam at the bank is the best thing I've ever heard in a baseball game. The two one on the way, swing and a miss. And, you know, I got to tell you. I don't know if that call, there's some calls that are just made for TV and there's some calls that are just made for for a radio. The 2-2 is swung on and missed and Turnbull records another strikeout. That's his fourth K of the day. But I think that Scott Fransky's call of Bedlam at the Bank was like the picture-perfect call for radio and I don't even know if it would have been good as good on TV or as well perceived on TV. Maybe it would have been, but we'll never know. Two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And the next pitch is just at the knees for a strike to Burleson. That's the first pitch of this at bat. And it's a great call. It really is. I'm just curious. I don't I don't know if it would have been as well perceived on TV, but for radio it was like a picture perfect call. Because you could envision that. The 0-1. Line drive out in the center field. Roas thought he had to come in, but he backpedals a little bit and he'll make the catch. So the inning comes to an end. 
And we go now to the top of the fifth inning. Turnbull pitching really well so far. Has only allowed one hit through four innings. And Marsh will lead things off when the Phillies return for the top of the fifth. It was a really good call. I just, uh, I have to make that, co- that you know, that comment, though, because I think that it's interesting because I'm somebody that really likes to, obviously, because I do this, I kind of geek out on it. But I always wonder, like, how would that call have been, like, for TV or, like, how different of a call would it have been if it was in this situation? You know? Like, that's always, like, where my mind is. But it is definitely an iconic call. And that's going to go down as one of the best Phillies calls of all time. Along with this other one, Harry Callis says that the Philadelphia Phillies are world champions of baseball. Yep. Both of them. Good ones. How about sport? How about other sporting event calls besides just baseball? Larry said he buries it. (laughs) I don't know who made that call, but I'm sure it was a basketball call. Anybody have a favorite basketball call that they've heard? Or a football call or a hockey call? Or any other sport, even if it's soccer or tennis or anything? I like... I think that Jim Nance does such a great job at golf, and he doesn't get... I know that in the golf world he gets enough love, but I don't know if he gets the love that he really does deserve because he really understands the nature of the game. And whenever, in some ways, like, I've gotten kind of more into golf over the years, and listening to his calls on the TV, it's just... Like, you're just sitting back and you're just watching with a friend. And he always says, hello, friends, at the very beginning of each call. Here's Brandon Marsh, who looks at a pitch that's low for ball one. Michaelis, not wasting any time, throws the next one. That's a little curveball that's inside for ball two. But one of my favorite calls by him is when he called Tiger Woods' comeback. um, And he called it a win for the ages. That was a good one. The 2-0, ground ball right through the 5-6 hole, and it's in there for a base hit, and Marsh goes the other way with an opposite field single. That's how we start off the inning. The Phillies, they had two hits in the third. We're not able to get anybody home. They haven't had a hit since then. But now we're in the fifth, and here's Garrett Stubbs. He's coming up to bat as the eighth hitter, and he lines this one out to right field for a base hit. Walker has to get over to it, and uh, he will throw it in towards the cutoff man. And going over to third is Marsh. So that'll put runners at the corners. So back-to-back singles on back-to-back pitches, and here comes Johan Rojas who got a double down the left field line in his last inning. And the Phillies now have a golden opportunity to try to get on the board with nobody out. On deck, of course, is Kyle Schwarber, but Rojas checks his bat over across the plate, now gets into his stance. Michaelis gets set above the belt, winds up and delivers, and there's a ground ball right through the first base side for a hit. Marsh will come in to score, and going over to second is Stubbs. He'll go over to third, and it's an RBI opposite field single by Johan Rojas, and the Phillies take a 1-0 lead in the top of the fifth inning. So Rojas able to knock that one through the 3-4 side. And just stayed with the pitch. And he puts the Phillies out in front. So back-to-back-to-back singles on back-to-back-to-back pitches. And Kyle Schwarber looking to join in on the party. Still nobody out. And the first pitch to Schwarber, he takes a changeup right at the knees on the outside corner for a strike. 
So Rojas against the Cardinals is now 10 for 15 with four doubles and two RBI. Throw back to first is not in time, and Rojas didn't even have to dive back in there. But Schwarber's 0 for 2 with a fly out and a pop out. He's up at the plate. He swung at the first pitch during both of his at-bats, and I think he learned a lesson from that this time around. As the bat on the shoulder, the 0-1 is swung on and missed. It was a fastball right down the pipe, and Schwarber was just really late on it. This isn't baseball, but what do you think of the Charlotte Hornets announcer? Makes me laugh. I haven't really listened to much of the Charlotte Hornets announcer, to be honest. 0-2 is the count. Michaelis, and the next pitch, it's sliced. Or it was actually uh, fouled back right behind the plate. Herrera actually barehanded it, and it was not ruled a fair ball. Kyle is 2-for-8 with runners in scoring position with three RBI, four strikeouts, and one walk. No balls, two strikes. Michaelis gets set above the belt, winds up and delivers, and it's just fouled off. And we'll do it again. Schwarber stays alive. My favorite baseball call is probably Harper's walk-off grand slam against the Cubs because I've watched it live. So that was on TV. That's a good one. Better than most. Flyers win the Stanley Cup. The Flyers win the Stanley Cup. That was your favorite. No balls. Two strikes to Kyle Schwarber. And the 0-2 on the way. It's chopped towards the first base side. And it's foul. Stubbs was coming in the home plate. And left to go back over to third. And Rojas was about halfway between first and second. And they'll just have to walk back over to first. You know, there was a play... A couple of years ago where there was an at-bat, and I can't seem to remember who it was, but it was like a 19-pitch at-bat. And the runner was over at first, had to, like, jog over to second and then go back over to first, like, 10 times. The 0-2 is down low. It was a breaking ball. They ruled it as a slow curve at 71 miles per hour. But to end the story... The batter at the plate ended up striking out to end the inning. <laughs> the runner that was over at first was like, come on, man. Couldn't get me over to second. The one-two on the way. It's inside and low for ball two. Seven pitches right now in this at-bat to Kyle Schwarber. He has fouled off three of those pitches. Phillies lead it one to nothing. They have runners at the corners. Nobody out the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, and Schorber strikes out for the first out of the inning. Miles Michaelis with three Ks on the evening. Decided to go with a fastball that was just inside, and Schorber couldn't time it correctly. He was late. And I'll go back to the dugout. Here's, here's uh, Turner who steps into the box. He singled in the third. It was an infield single. And the first pitch is lined back up the middle for a base hit. Over to second baseman's head. Stubbs will jog in the score. And going over to second base is uh, Rojas. So that's an RBI single for the Phillies. And they lead it now 2 to nothing in the top of the fifth. Turner able to turn on a fastball. Not able to do too much with it. Just made some solid contact. Hit it over the head. Of the second baseman. And now Bryce Harper's coming up to bat. Harper with the first pitch. It's popped up over towards foul ground. Arenado will give it a look. And it goes right above the visitor's dugout. And bounces about 12 rows behind the dugout. I love watching golf. I know it's not for everyone. Larry says, I got to catch up on all these things. But Harper's up at the plate. He's 0 for 1. He walked in the first. And he's hitting 281 on the season with 7 RBI. He had a 6 RBI game where he also hit 3 homers. One of them was a grand slam. The 0 1 to Harper. Ground ball right over towards the second base side. And the flip over to first is in plenty of time. 
for out number two. That'll put the runners, though, over at second and third. So Turner hops over to second, and going over to third is Rojas. That was a gimme fastball right down the middle, too. And Harper got way on top of it. And here's Alec Bowman who will step into the box. Do you believe in miracles called? That was a good one, too. Here's Bohm, who will ground this one over to shortstop. He was mad that he got on top of it. The flip over to first is in time. The Phillies do get two runs, though, on the board as we go to the bottom of the fifth, thanks to an RBI single by Johan Rojas and Trey Turner. All right. Uh, Johan, I beg. Johan. So bad before you worked on the swing. Roas coming out, party short bomb. Please, man, I'm still I'm so far behind. I apologize. The Mets just came back. It was four to one. But hey, they came back against the Braves, right? They came back against the Braves. So I don't know. You gotta pick your poison. If you're a Phillies fan, okay, my question to you is what bothers you more? In regards to fandom, the Mets or the Braves? Let me know. At least we got to. I agree with that. If you guys are new, hit the thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button as well. Turn on the bell icon and that way you'll know when I go live. Hmm. He buried it is Phil's TV guy, Andy Musser's call of Schmidt's 1980 division clinching home run. That's funny because buries it is usually used a lot, usually used a lot in basketball. Like if somebody buries a shot, Mark Zumoff was one of those guys that did say buries it a lot. So I never really heard it in baseball. That's cool. Why do I have to pick? Boo them both. Well, sometimes we have our games where, like this one, if you were to, to root for one of them, who would it be for? <laughs> I guess that you could root for neither, though. How about this for a scene? So the Cincinnati Reds are now up 9-8 to eight against the Milwaukee Brewers. The Reds were up 8 to nothing. Literally at the end of the fourth inning, as the first pitch is swung on and missed, Turnbull's on the bump. He's thrown 59 pitches, 58 coming into the inning. Walker's up. And the 0-1 by Turnbull is is uh, is uh, fouled off. But yeah, the Reds were up nine to, uh, 8 to nothing, 8 to nothing at the end of the fourth inning. The Brewers then put up three runs in the fifth. Reds got one back in the bottom of the fifth, and then they scored the Brewers, that is, three runs in the sixth and two in the seventh. The 0-2 on the way is outside and low for a ball. I despise the Mets. Snooter Pratt says Mets all day. We show up against the, Bra the Braves all the time, but we seem to struggle against those Mets. And their fans are cocky, he says. The one-two misses badly outside and low for ball two. And the count is now even at two apiece. Speaking of rivalries, one of the Flyers' rivals, their biggest rival of all time, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they are tied one-to-one -one in their hockey game tonight. The two-two strike three called right at the knees, a four-seamer at 92, and Turnbull gets his fifth strikeout of the evening. First time that he has struck out Jordan Walker. Penguins are tied with the Maple Leafs at one apiece as they go into the third period. The Braves have passed the Mets on my most hated list. Nobody passed the Yankees, though. Nobody ever passes the Astros for you. Okay. One out bottom of the fifth. And Turnbull throws a four-seamer that misses inside for ball one. But Larry said that the Pittsburgh Pirates were on his list at one point. Of course, when you go back to those 70s teams. 
Don't want to remind him of that, though. The one oh, there's a line drive out to right field. It's going to drop in for a hit. It takes two bounces right in front of Castellanos, who gets down on one knee, and he'll throw it back in towards the infield, and Win is able to get aboard with an opposite field single. DFJ's here. What's up, man? Thanks so much for coming on and hopping in here. Appreciate it. Those glorified trash cans, the Astros. <laughs> so Wynn gets on with a single out to right. Here comes Scott. Throw back over to first. Not even close to the bag. But Harper does catch it. Wynn, you got to be careful of in regards to his base running. The Reds just got to run back in the bottom of the seventh inning. It was De La Cruz who just hit his second homer of the game. No balls, one strike to Scott the second. Who got on his last time up with a hit by pitch and also stole a base. The 0-1, there's a high bouncer over towards the mound. Turnbull has it, won't have a play over at second, but he throws over to first to get the speedster, Scott, and he gets him just by half a step. Two away in the bottom of the fifth. Got to give Turnbull some credit because he makes a basket catch and knew that it was a high bouncer. He had to wait for the ball that just hit his glove, and he got his feet set and threw a strike over to first. Didn't really have much time to do it, and he was able to just throw it. wonder what the radar gun would have said on that throw. Now here's Donovan, who swings and misses at a curveball that was on the inside edge of the plate and just at the knees as well. Brendan Donovan batting on the left side, and then 294 on the season. He is grounded out twice today, once to second, and the other time to shortstop. No balls, one strike. Turnbull looks back over at second, and he'll reset as the pitch clock will reset and go back to 16 seconds. Phillies lead it 2 to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. The 0-1 on the way, it's sliced foul over towards the left field side. In that Brewers-Reds uh, game, there have been 20 hits combined and 18 runs scored combined as well. It's got to be the highest scoring game of the year so far. Has to be up there. No balls, two strikes. Turner covering second in case Wynn decides to go. The 0-2, there's a bouncer over towards the first base side. Gloved by Stott, and they'll flip it over to first. Got him. And that's the end of the inning. No runs. One man left, and we go to the top of the six. Spencer Turnbull has only allowed two hits today, and Stott, Castellanos, and Marsh will come on up for the Fightins in the top of the sixth. The 70s Dodgers were the most arrogant team in be, uh, team ever. Beat the Phils in the playoffs in 77-78. I live here in Houston. Haven't heard one second of any game at all. Have no idea what their record is. Are you talking about their game? Are you, talk, are you talking about the Astros? Astros got off to a really slow start. Astros actually, they're three and seven on the season. They're playing the Rangers again. Didn't they just play against the Rangers? I feel like they just played the Rangers. <laughs> That's weird. I know it's a four game series, so this series ended today. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that they still do that. I I thought that uh, usually like four-game series over the last couple of years were like from Thursday to Monday or Monday to Thursday. Or sorry, Thursday to Sunday and then Monday to Thursday. But I didn't know they still do Friday to Monday. Hmm. I've always liked it. Hmm. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and hit the bell icons and that way you know when I go live. Phillies beat the Dodgers in the playoffs in 83 and 93. And you can't forget about the 08 and 09 times as well. I count those times too. But yes. 
I want Cassidy to get his first bomb today. Great wake-up call for him. Well, he has a chance to do so. As the Phillies are in the sixth inning, so there's Bryson Stout who looks at a pitch that's on the outside corner for a called strike. Phillies lead it two to nothing, and Stott tries to go or swing at a pitch, and that's... So the first one was actually a ball. I beg your pardon. The second one was in there for a strike. So now we got everything checked out. One ball, one strike to Bryson Stott. Mike was still on the bump. The pitch to Stott. There's a line drive over towards left field, not that deep, and making the catch out and left will be uh, Brendan Donovan for out number one. I think Casty needs another month to wake up. Yeah. Stairs rips one into the night. That was a good call, too. Nick is 0 for 2 today with a fly out and a ground out. One out in the top of the six, and Michaelis will throw a pitch that'll make Castellanos trap that one foul towards the third base side. The 0-1 pitch to Castellanos, and he just lays off a sweeper. That one misses. Against Michaelis, he's 5 for 23, Castellanos coming into today. The 1-1 just fouled a back. But two of his hits were homers. He is 1 for 18 this season with two strikes on him. The 1-2 he misses low and outside for ball two. So if there's anybody that really has to get going in this Phillies lineup, it's this guy. Because when, when his bat is hot, it is red, red hot. The 2-2 two -two on the way fouled just off the glove of Herrera. Michaelis with 81 pitches. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Phillies lead it two to nothing. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Grounder hit over to third base. Arenado has it and throws over to first. And it's in time. So there's two outs now. Castellanos has grounded out. He's been retired for the third time today. Now bring up Brandon Marsh. Wasn't alive to see the stairs call because I'm very young, but it's still amazing. Nice. It's Brandon Marsh who looks at the strike. It's a curveball at 75 miles per hour. Marsh is one for two. He singled in the fifth. And also was able to score what was the first run on the RBI single by Roas. 84 total pitches for Michaelis. The one one on the way. There's a fly ball hit out towards left field. It's carrying, and it'll stay in the yard, though. And Donovan's there to track it down at the track, and he'll make the catch. And the side is retired. So that's now the third 1-2-3 inning set by Miles Michaelis, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. Philly's still up 2 to nothing at Bush Field. Bush Stadium. <sighs> it was really cool to see it in real time. It was really awesome. Purdue and UConn are going to get started in just... 10 minutes, just about 10 minutes. <sighs> Excuse me. Beg your pardon. If you are new, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon, and that way you'll know when I go live. The name, of course, is Jason Joseph, and this is Play by Play with JJ. We're on for the Phillies, the Sixers, and the Eagles. Try not to miss a game. So. Uh, if you if you do enjoy this content, feel free to hit the thumbs up button and feel free to subscribe. And also, if you want to donate, you're totally more than welcome to do so. Uh, if you want to get back to the channel, don't want to forget about that. 
and also other housekeeping stuff. If you're tuning in on Facebook, on Twitch, or on any other social media platform, you can either, A, come on over to YouTube and type in Play by Play with JJ, or you can also uh, follow me on all the other social media channels, too, if you're not able to come on over to YouTube. But if you are posting comments there, I'm most likely not reading them because I have a lot of screens up. And it's not that I don't love you guys, because I do, but... Uh, sometimes you just have to fight the bullet when you have so much stuff up like on your screens and I can't see everything. I don't have eight eyes. Uh, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning out at Bush Stadium and Turnbull still out there pitching. It's been a two-hitter for him through five innings. <clears throat> Can you guys hear the loud... A squeak that my chair makes. I'll have to. I didn't realize that that's been like a thing, but I think it's been a thing for a while, and I never really thought about it on like an actual broadcast. Comes Paul Goldschmidt to the plate, and Turnbull will face him again. As Turnbull does throw a strike, it's in there at the knees. Phillies will have Sir Anthony Dominguez loosening up in their bullpen. The right-handed pitcher. The count is 0-1. There's three seconds left on the pitch timer. And time is called by Stubbs. I don't think Turnbull recognized how much time was left on the pitch timer. But Stubbs will walk over towards the mound with his mask on. There's Rob Thompson standing on the stairwell. And now goes back over uh, in the dugout. Just had one foot on the stairwell, but just decides to uh, walk over towards the right side. Stubbs goes back to the plate. Turnbull takes the rubber, throws it down, and now grabs his grip of the baseball. Gets set just right at the letters. Takes a quick breath. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Starts his motion, and the 0-1 is low. Decided to go with a sinker at 94 miles per hour. And Goldschmidt did not want to offer anything at the menu. Goldschmidt has struck out all five times against Spencer Turnbull. The one-to-one is way outside and low for ball two as it actually hits the backstop. But Goldie, before today, was 0 for 3 with a hat trick of strikeouts against Spencer Turnbull. He has struck out Two more times against him today. The 2-1. There's a fly ball hit out towards a shallow right center field. Stock calls off Rojas and Castellanos, and he'll make the catch. He had the back pedal. And for the first time, well, Paul Goldschmidt did not strike out against Spencer Turnbull. He actually popped out over the shallow right center field. Same result. How did he get there, though? That was a little bit different. One out in the bottom of the sixth, and there's a strike. It's a sweeper at the knees, taken all the way by Nolan Gorman, who has flown out and struck out today. No balls, one strike. Turnbull starts his motion and fires a curveball that just misses wide. One ball, one strike to Nolan Gorman. And the next pitch is a 91-mile-per-hour four-seamer at the knees. Two total. One was an I, was an ITP. <laughs> the one-two on the way by Turnbull. Grounder pulled over towards the second-base side. Stott has it, fields it cleanly, and throws over to Harper to record the second out of the inning. Just got the notification, but it didn't just happen. <laughs> what counts as a homer? Oh, Ella De La Cruz had an inside the park homer. Sorry, I wasn't checking. That's cool. It was an inside the park homer. Wow. 
said that he homered a second time, but I didn't realize it was an inside the parker. The pitch to Arenado is taken low and outside for a ball. Nolan doubled in the second. He's hitting 279 on the season with four RBI to go along with that. Turnbull gets set at the letters. Looks at the signs from Stubbs and fires the 1-0, which is swung on and missed. It was a slider that was low, heading towards the dirt. Marinado certainly got fooled. Arenado has had a fantastic career so far. Now 32 years old on a $144 million contract. And the next pitch swung on and missed. And that'll make the count now one and two. Lots of gold gloves. He's won. One ball, two strikes. And time is called very quickly, so Turnbull wants to reset again. He's won 10 gold gloves to be exact. Nine straight. Or sorry, 10 straight over a third. Also an eight-time All-Star. 2-2 two -two on the way. Looked a little bit outside, and Arenado goes down looking. And he does not agree with the call by Carpaza. And we go now to the top of the seventh inning. Phillies lead it two to nothing as Arenado strikes out looking. And the Phillies coming back up to bat. That was not the right call. But they will take it. Might be Turnbull's last inning. Well, I said that Dominguez was warming up in the bullpen. You said three homers. Sorry about that. You know, it is two. You said two homers. Mm. What time is it? 9.17? Huh. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon, and that way you'll know when I go live. Phenomenal outing for Spencer Turnbull. Yeah, he had a really good outing today for sure. Uh... Only allowed two hits and really was dominant on the mound. Really had a good day. We got 64 people on here watching. And I'm sure that not all 64 of you hit that like button. You didn't. We only have 34 likes. So hit that thumbs up button. My name is Jason Joseph. This, of course, is Play by Play with JJ. If you like what you hear, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we cover the Phillies, the Sixers, and the Eagles. Six strikeouts, only one walk. Yeah. I could have interpreted that the other way, though. I was actually thinking you were saying only six strikeouts and one walk, but then I realized English. <laughs> so, Johan Roas has two of the Phillies' six hits today at an RBI single in the fifth inning, also at a double. So really, he needs the two hardest hits if he wants to get the cycle. I think that'd be a little bit tough, but he actually could have a chance to do it if he comes up for the ninth inning or something like that. Stubbs will come on up, though, first here to start off this uh, top of the seventh inning. It's 8-9-1, and one, and he'll attempt to bunt at the first pitch, but it's foul. Michaelis... Still on the bump. This will probably be his last inning of work. He's thrown 86 pitches. Stubbs is one for two. He did single his last time up, and he'll chop this one foul over towards the right side. Turnbull was absolutely incredible today. We'll talk a little bit more about that after this pitch. The 0-2 is grounded over towards the first base side, gobbled up by Goldschmidt, and Michaelis has to cover the bag. He gets there and wins the race against Garrett Stubbs. So there's one away to start off the top of the seventh inning. Phillies will take on the Pirates on Thursday, uh, Friday, and uh, Saturday, and Sunday as well. Or is it just, is it really just Thursday, Saturday, Sunday? It can't just be Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. No, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
Here's Rowe Oster swings and hits this one high and deep out to left field. It'll stay in the yard, though, and making the catch is Donovan for out number two. And Dominguez is now getting loosened up in the bullpen. So I mentioned uh, mentioned that uh, that Spencer Turnbull had a very, very good outing, and he did. He pitched really well, only allowed two hits, had six strikeouts on 82 pitches, and only threw 29 balls. Uh, it was really, really incredible. One walk as well, as Larry said. We do have a timeout on the mound, and actually a pitching change will be made in the top of the seventh inning. And the Phillies and the Cardinals will be right back in just a few moments. Cardinals have a new pitcher coming in for Miles Michaelis. As will, that will be the end of his day. It will be Matthew Liberator, the 24-year-old from Peoria, Arizona. Huh. <sighs> Elder Ute. Well, my wife's Brooklyn accent sometimes comes out. Oh, my gosh. What's up? What's up, everybody? Well, what did I do? As somebody who watches the Tigers a lot, they're my home team. Turnbull looks way better in Philly than he did in Detroit. I thought you were going to say, I don't know why, as I'm reading it, sometimes, and this is just what I think, and you, you'll have to... If you guys do this, like you'll you probably develop the same sort of a habit. But I thought you were gonna say that he looks better in a Phillies uniform than he does in a Tigers uniform. <laughs> That's what I thought you were gonna say. Elder you says, My wife says I pick up my Philly accent after listening to you. Okay, that's where that comment comes from. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I do have a Philly accent. Hey, I'm proud of it. I like it. I like it a lot. You reminded me of the movie The Martian. JJ's gonna English the the crud out of this. <laughs> this is why you guys are awesome. You guys are like what really made this cast so cool. I'm not really naturally even a funny guy. You guys make it really, really cool. I'm not even, like, throwing shots at myself, nothing like that. I'm just not, you know? But you guys definitely make the cast really fun. I swear I have no accent. Everybody has an accent, man. Here's Kyle Schwarber, who will step into the box, and he'll ground this first pitch over to second base. And the inning comes to an end. One pitch for Liberator. And they decided to go with a lefty on lefty, and it worked out. And stretch time over at Bush Stadium. Philly still lead it two to nothing. Huh. All right. So Roas flew out to left. All right. I'm going to ask you a Phillies trivia question, and if you get the answer correct, you'll hear this. Whoops. You'll hear this. If you get the answer incorrect, you'll hear this. Okay. Which one should we go for? All right. Um, how about this one? We'll do this. Uh. So. Um. Mm, eh, I don't like that one. I thought we were going to do that one. All right, tell me Greg Lazinski's nickname. Anybody know that? Greg Lazinski's nickname? We'll do two today. I'm feeling kind of like it's a two-headed day. Greg Lazinski's nickname. Anybody know? Please comment down below. The bowl. That is... Correct. You got it. You got it. You got it. Um, Michael got it. Actually, if it was first, Larry. But yes, you guys got it. I like that. That was beautiful. All right, we'll do this one too. Uh, uh, all right, so... Who was the 37th overall pick of the 2007 MLB draft? 
37th overall pick. The hint, I'm not, okay, the hint is that he was a Philly, obviously. 37th pick in the first round of the 2007 MLB draft. Anybody know? Who is it? First pitch is way outside by Sir Anthony Dominguez, and Spencer Turnbull's day is done. Turnbull pitched really, really well. Only allowed two hits and had six strikeouts today. The 1-0 to Herrera is chopped foul. Uh, That's incorrect. Nola? (laughs) 2007, I said. 2007. Jamie Moyer? Nope. The 1-1 swing on the fly ball hit out to left field. It's carrying, and Marsh makes the, or does not make the catch. It just went over his glove. I think it actually went off of his glove out into left field and it's or into the bullpen, and it's now a 2-1 to one game on a solo homer by Herrera. It's a pretty weird call. But Herrera gets a home run. Let's see this again. So Herrera, I mean, it was a good pitch to hit, obviously, and... It just slipped right out of the glove of Brandon Marsh. It was it would have been a tough catch anyways. He tried to leap for, up for it and make the catch, but it just missed the glove. So here we go. First pitch to this batter is grounded over towards first base. Harper makes a diving stop, throws over to first, and it's in time to get Alec Burleson. Huh. So Burleson is retired. Herrera just did a solo homer. It went off, It bounced off of Marsh's glove. He tried to make a leaping catch. And it would have been a tough play anyways. So. Uh, let's see. Jamie Moyer. The bull. No. Eden Miller. <clears throat> One out in the bottom of the seventh. Here's Jordan Walker. Who swings and misses at the next pitch. So the 37th overall pick in the first round of the 2007 MLB draft. Who was it? Anybody? Anybody else? No balls, one strike. The next pitch is fouled off. Hoskins. We're talking about 2007. Hoskins was like 2014. Mm. Incorrect. Dominic Brown. Mm. Too early for Hoskins. Michael Franco? No. This is a tough one. I thought this would be easy. I like this. No balls, two strikes, and the next pitch is outside, way outside for a ball. This is a good one. I like this one a lot. David Price. I'll give you two more guesses. The one-two on the way by Dominguez misses outside again for ball two. Worth was playing in 07, so that is incorrect. Uh, I believe that it was the Diamondbacks against the Rockies that was the highest score this year. You're probably really behind in the chat or, or really behind in the stream, so I, I do hope that you catch up or I hope that you are caught up. But Two balls, two strikes, but I do appreciate that feedback. All right, cool. All right, one more guess. One more guess on the 2007 37th overall pick. I kind of enjoy seeing you guys not get this correct. This is nice. <laughs> the 2 2 on the way swung on and missed. And Dominguez gets his uh, first strike out of the day. I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> now you're going to say JJ enjoys your misery of struggling. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Any more guesses? Travis Darno. I'm sure you looked it up, but that is correct. Travis Darno. You got it. You got it. That's correct. Travis Darno was technically a Philly. Yep. The 1 0 pitch. All right. Who looked it up? Be honest. Who looked it up? Now I got to know. The 1 0 is inside for ball two. So two balls, no strikes. We're in the bottom of the seventh. There's two outs. It's a two-to-one ball game. The next pitch is in there for a strike. I forgot we drafted him. That's right. 
That's why I asked that question. Why do you think I came up with two? Guilty. Okay, looked it up. Y'all are... All right. The 2-1 pitch. There's a fly ball hit out to left field. It'll stay in the yard, though, as Marsh will make the catch, and the inning comes to an end. All right, so just a home run allowed for uh, for Herrera, and we go now to the top of the eighth. I'm going to take a very quick step off. I'll be right back. I'll be right, right back. Oh, all right. So let's see this again. So Marsh, yeah, but just bounced off the heel of his glove. That was the home run allowed. All right. First pitch is just outside and high for a ball. So Trey Turner's up at the plate, Liberator. We only had to throw one pitch to end the seventh. He's facing Turner here, and there's a curveball that's on the outside corner on the upper third of the zone for a called strike. So it's one and one. Turner is single twice today. One of them was an RBI single, and he fouls the next pitch right off of his foot. I believe that that also got a piece of Herrera as well. It did. Herrera has to take a step out. And that has got to hurt. So it's one ball, two strikes. Always got to give Kathy a shout out. Always got to give Kathy a shout out. We love you, Kathy. And we're always thinking about you. You're in our hearts. One ball, two strikes. The next pitch way outside for ball two. That's our cleanup hitter. We're actually two batters away from our cleanup hitter in this game. And the 2-2 is a curveball that's in the dirt for ball three. Huh. So Liberator gets set, kicks, steals the payoff pitch, bouncer, it over towards the shortstop side, and the flip over to first is not in time. Goldschmidt's foot just came off the bag. It was a tough play, too, because it was hit back up the middle. So there was a play earlier where Stott and Harper had to communicate as the ground ball was fielded over towards that first base side. This was a little bit of a, a similar situation where it was uh, it, it was basically the second baseman and the shortstop um, had, to, had to communicate on the St. Louis side of things. Of course, we love you. First pitch swing and a miss. So Liberator is on the bump. <laughs> Ooh. No ball is one strike. And Harper will slice this one foul. Slice that one foul. Turner and Roas are having a good day at the plate. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. The ball is two strikes to Bryce Harper. Five seconds left on the pitch clock again. In the 0-2, there's a grounder. Hit over to second base. The flip over to short. There's one. The throw back to first in time. That's the second double play that Harper has hit into today. Does not happen too often. So, two down in the top of the eighth inning. Uh, we're praying for you, Kathy. Yep, always. Always praying. Did, uh, wanted to see because sometimes I don't always get, uh, you know, the comments because it goes by like really fast on here. Here's Boehm who comes up and looks at a curveball that's on the inside corner for a strike, and Boehm does not like the call that Carpaza just made. I do apologize, though, if I do miss some of your comments. The 0-1, there's a little uh, cue shot over towards the mound to throw over to first. Did Goldschmidt hang on? He did. Wow. Goldschmidt had to go diving for the ball again. That's like the second time today that the throw was a little bit off, and it was a tough play, too, by Liberator. He had the charge over from the mound over towards the third base side, barehanded it, threw a skip pass over to first, and Paul Goldschmidt, this is why he's a gold glover over at first, just such a great athlete, hung on to the bag. The inning is over, and we head to the bottom of the eighth. Phillies up 2-1 to one against the St. Louis Cardinals. <clears throat> Love you too, J.J., Larry, and Snooter. Schwarber, Harper, Acasti, and Stott not hitting today. Nope. <sighs> time is at 9.37 p.m. Wow. Cardinals only have three hits. Phillies have seven hits, and they scored both runs in the fifth inning on an RBI single by Rojas and Turner. Huh. If you are new, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. We have a lot of people tuning in on here, and I want to make sure that I thank you all for that. 59 people to be exact, so uh, hit the thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button. And also, feel free to donate um, and uh, leave a super chat down below. 12 of you have not hit that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it if, if you guys did. I know that some of you are away from your electronic devices and you're tuning in at work or you're listening on the radio or just on the go, you know. So, appreciate you all so much for being here. And tell a friend about this channel, too. You know, we really try to give you guys the best type of play-by-play -play that we can. That's important. So, the Huskies are beating Purdue so far 18-16. to That game uh, is still in the first quarter. Do you know it was the first uh, pick? Uh, who the first pick was in 2006? Hint, his dad was an MLB pitcher. Was it Tom Gordon? It wasn't Tom Gordon. Who's pitching right? Uh, who's pitching for the Cardinals right now? Oh, Urban, you probably didn't hear it earlier, but I said Matthew Liberator. So, apologize if you didn't hear it earlier. But yeah, I did say it. Like I, I think I said it about like two times, but. Here's Jose Alvarado, who will be pitching. He throws a ball down low. Alvarado has pitched in five games this year. There's a 9.64 earned run average. It'll get set just above the belt. Phillies lead a 2-1. We're in the bottom of the eighth in St. Louis, and the 1-0 is chopped foul off of Scott's left foot. So Victor Scott, the second, playing out in center field, got hit by a pitch in the third and stole a bag, just hitting 0-81. On the season so far. One ball, one strike. And Alvarado fires, and that's bunted foul towards the first base side. Stubbs gives it a little stare. It did not bounce back into fair ground. Yep, I got you. No worries, man. So Spencer Turnbull, through his first two starts, has gone 11 innings. He's only allowed five hits. And has only walked one batter and hit a batter, too. Alvarado takes a quick breath. 
And the one-two pitch, strike three called. It was a cutter on the outside edge of the plate that got Scott freezing. And there's one away. Interesting decision for Thompson to use Alvarado in this situation. A little curious as to why he's not using him for the ninth. I guess he maybe he wants to go with Hoffman. But Donovan comes up. Well, I know why, because there's a lot of lefties in this part of the lineup. One and know is the count to Donovan. One out in the bottom of the eighth. And the pitch down low. That one misses at 97 miles per hour. Two balls, no strikes to Donovan. Kind of been playing out in left field. He's now 27 years old. The 2-0 is inside and high. Alvarado decides to go at 97 miles per hour. And it's now a 3-0 count. Bottom of the eighth. Phillies up 2-1. They scored both runs in the fifth. The Cardinals got one back in the bottom of the seventh. And the 3-0 pitch is just in there for a strike at the knees. The 3-1 offering by Alvarado chopped foul by Donovan. And it's now a full count at 3-2. and two. Big payoff pitch coming for Alvarado. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock and the 3-2 on the way just misses outside. And there's a one-out walk drawn by Donovan. Brandon Donovan able to get on. In this bottom of the eighth inning, and here comes Paul Goldschmidt to the plates. This is a big spot for him here. Brendan Donovan from uh, Wurzburg, Germany, was raised in Enterprise, Alabama, and went to the University of South Alabama, was a seventh-round pick by the Cardinals in the 2018 draft. Here's Goldschmidt at the plate, takes a strike at the knees. At 97 miles per hour. Now, Verado has yet to hit 100 this season. No balls, one strike. Now, Verado goes back at first, now back to the plate, the 0-1 pitch. Just fouled off a cutter at 92. Goldschmidt spent his first seven years with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Is a seven-time All-Star. Won NL MVP back in 2022. The ball's two strikes to Paul Goldschmidt. Alvarado gets set, kicks, steals the pitch. Another cutter that was inside and fouled. This is his 14th year in Major League Baseball, and he was an eighth-round draft pick back in 2009. Hard to believe it was that long ago. But the 36-year-old stands at the plate. Just stepped back into the box. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock. One out in the bottom of the eighth. Big at-bat here for him. Alvarado going with power on power. The 0-2. It misses inside for ball one. We got dark real quick over there. Wow. One ball, two strikes. Alvarado looks back over at first. Getting ready to throw the baseball to the plate, the kick, and the pitch. And Goldschmidt thought about going. It was inside and high at 96. And Goldie held the trigger. So it was an 0-2 count. And Goldschmidt has evened up the count now at two apiece. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Alvarado stares, gets the signs from Stubbs. And the 2-2 pitch to Goldschmidt fouled back right behind the plate. And it'll find the seats. Goldie also has won two Hank Aaron Awards, four gold gloves, and five silver slugger awards too. The 2-2 on the way. There's a fly ball hit out to left field. And Marsh gets under it 
And he'll have to backpedal just a little bit and he'll make the catch. And Alvarado thought that maybe he left one hanging. And Goldschmidt got way under it. And Alvarado takes a sigh of relief. He knew that he just missed that spot. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. And now Nolan Gorman is coming up as the other Nolan Arenado, that is, waits in the on-deck circle. Two outs. Phillies need four more outs in order to get the win. And there's a strike that's in there at the knees for a strike. Did I just say a strike that's in there at the knees for a strike? This is why reps are so important. The you know, one offering that's on the outside corner. It was a cutter at 92 for a strike. Gorman's 0 for 3, hitting on the left side. He's wearing his white batting gloves, has the bat just on his shoulder, now puts it up right by his helmet, and the 0-2 is just down low, right behind his helmet. So one ball, two strikes to Nolan Gorman. He's hitting 333 this season in the seventh inning or later. And it's 4 for 12 with two doubles and a homer and six RBI. The 1 2 on the way. It's low and outside to even up the count at two apiece. So we have a runner over at first. And that is uh, Brendan Donovan. Two outs, two balls, two strikes. The Gorman, Alvarado kicks and delivers, and another foul back towards the screen. And the count still remains at two and two. Alvarado gets the signs again. He gets set at the belts. And the 2-2 pitch, there's a fly ball hit out towards shallow center field. Roas comes jogging in oh, and over towards the left side, and he does make the catch. And the inning comes to an end. No runs, one man left, and we go to the ninth. Phillies lead it 2-1. to one. They're looking to add on some more runs to get the win. All right, I'm going to take a very quick step off. I'll be right back, though. The ball is one strike. Libertor back out there on the bump to face Bryce and Stiles. We start off the top of the ninth, and the 0-1 is low, and the count is even at one apiece. So Stock rounded out, flied out, and lined out today. 
And Libertor gets set, kicks, delivers. And the pitch is in there on the outside corner for a called strike. One and two is the count. Stat looking for his first hit of the game. Libertor gets set again, kicks, steals, and there was an upstairs fastball that's just fouled off. It was a defensive swing. Hoffman is warming up in the bullpen, and he will pitch the ninth inning, the bottom of the ninth, that is, and face the the uh, four, five, and six spots, and more if it gets any further. The next pitch is outside for a ball, so the count is even at two apiece. Nick Castellanos waits in the on-deck circle. He's also gone hitless tonight. 2-2 two, two on the way. The Stotts swinging a foul tip into the glove for strike three. And there's one out in the ninth. So Stott is gone 0 for 4. Don't usually see that too much from him. And that's a compliment because he can get on base a whole lot. But that's the first time that he has struck out today. Now we're going to have another pitching changer, Zali Marmol, who will have Giovanni Gallegos, the guy who fires over 100 miles per hour for them, is coming up to pitch, and we have another pitching change. Strom Rob uses him almost every game. Well, I don't know. I'd like to see a couple more runs for comfort. I would, too. Uh, the Huskies are up 25 to 23 now against Purdue with 6:38 left to go in the first quarter in the first half. I do want to watch that game. Um, after this game is done, I will definitely be tuning into that for sure. Elder, you who's the oldest pitcher to have an RBI? He was on the Phillies. Oh, we're doing more trivia questions. That's not how this works. It's not how this works. Okay. I mean, you can ask. I'm not stopping you. But I don't know. I don't know who it was. I guess it's Jamie Moyer. Has to be Jamie Moyer, right? Was it Jamie Moyer? Because now I want to know. Who's the oldest pitcher to have an RBI? He was on the Phillies. I, I would say, I'd, I'd say that it's Jamie Moyer. Cole Hamels. <laughs> Yes, it was Jamie Moyer. Yeah. Jamie's a nice guy. I got to see him. Uh, really cool guy. We're in the top of the ninth. There's one out. There's a little kid that's smiling. He's a Phillies fan. I guess his mom is a Cardinals fan. Saw him wearing a Phillies hat. So here's Gallegos. He's pitched in five games. He's a 1.80 ERA in five innings of work, six strikeouts. And opponents are batting 176 against him. And here's Nick Castellanos, who will be his opponent that he has to face here. Brought him in for this situation. From the top of the ninth, Castellanos looking to try to win this battle here. Legos gets set above the letters, kicks the livers, and throws a slider that's at the knees for a strike at 83 miles per hour. Huh. Big spot here for Castellanos. The 0-1 on the way, swing and a miss. Another slider, back-to-back -back pitches that he throws the slider, which he's been throwing at a 57% rate. This uh, season, Gallegos. He's been going to the fastball about 40% of the time. And the changeup, he uses about 3%. No balls, two strikes. The 0-2 on the way. Those with a slider that was missing low and outside for ball one. He's one for nine lifetime against Gallegos with a three-run homer. 1-2 on the way, swing and a miss, and now make it 1 for 10 with four strikeouts. So we'll go back to over towards the dugout, and there's two outs now in this top of the ninth inning, and Brandon Marsh will be coming up to bat.
So there's back-to-back strikeouts for the Cardinals pitching staff. Five seconds left on the pitch clock here. Gallegos gets set above the letters again, kicks and delivers, throws a slider that was in the dirt, but it swung on and missed by Brandon Marsh. Marsh certainly got fooled. He did single in the fifth and also scored a run. Yo one on the way. That one just catches the outside edge of the plate for strike two. Marsh wants to call for time, and he'll take a quick step out of the box just to try to reset here. This game is just over two hours old. Two hours and ten minutes, I'd say. Oh, and two is the count to Marsh. Gallegos with six pitches so far. In the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Arenado, Herrera, and Bertelson. The 0-2 upstairs for ball one. And Jeff Hoffman will be entering into the game for the Phillies. Try to get his first save of the season. Gallegos comes set again. Winds up and delivers. And goes downstairs with the slider at 84. Mets and Braves are tied 5-5 five to five in the top of the 8th. Let's just take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. Toronto also leads a 4-1 to one against the Mariners in the bottom of the 8th. Two balls, two strikes to Brandon Marsh, and another foul ball on the next pitch. Astros lead it 10-5 in Texas against the Rangers, and that's only in the top of the sixth inning. Base is empty, two balls, two strikes, and Gallegos gets set, and the next pitch is up high and outside for ball three. The count was 0-2, and, and now it's full to Brandon Marsh. He's worked his way back up into the count. Three seconds left on the pitch clock, and the payoff pitch. Fly ball hit out to right field. It's deep, it's going, and it is gone! Brandon Marsh gives the Phillies some insurance in the top of the ninth with a solo blast out to right field. From 0-2 to 3-2, to a bomb. That was a hanging slider just left out over the middle of the plate, and Marsh did not miss a beat on that pitch. The question was, was it going to stay fair, and it did. It just did, went into the stairwell. Here's Stubbs, and he rips this one out to deep right field. And that's going back towards the track, but it is a foul ball. Man, he thought, he thought it was foul too, but that also had the distance. That's what you call professional at bat for Marsh. The 0-1 to Stubbs, and there's a slider that misses low for ball one. Stubbs singled in the fifth and also scored a run, too. The 1-1 one, one on the way. Grounder it back up the middle, and it's bobbled, and that's going to result in uh, Stubbs getting over to first base. Just bobbled over at second. And there's an error. Jeez Louise. Two outs in the top of the ninth. And that's one way that you get on. <laughs> and now Yoan Roas is coming up to the plate. So that was bobbled over by second by Nolan Gorman. Who's been over for 4 today. And Roas is up with a runner over at first. And the pitch is low. The throw over the second base to try to get Stubbs. Not in time. So Stubbs gets into second with a stolen base. So 
So they're going to charge that as an easy as an easy E4 on Nolan Gorman. One ball, no strikes. And now Stubbs in scoring position, the 1 0 pitch on the outside corner. It was a fastball at 93 miles per hour for a strike. Got Lagos with uh, 16 pitches. He's able to get the first two guys out. Stubbs leads off over at second. The 1-1 one, one to Rojas, swinging a grounder, hit over to shortstop, back in and stop the throw over to first. It's not in time. Rojas beat it out. Wynn did everything that he could. He took away a base hit out towards the left field, but Rojas, with all the speed that he has, was able to just barely beat it out. And now the top of the lineup coming up for the Fightins. Rojas, this is why he's so good at hustling. That's really been a, a good thing about his game is that he'll definitely try to beat out any play that he can. And he has a three-hit game. Unless they overturn this call if they're going to decide to challenge it. And I don't think that they will. They are. They are going to challenge it. So let's see. Tough to call. But honestly, if you're Ali Marmol, you have nothing to lose. So for now, it is a three-hit game for Rojas. They're looking at the replay center. Can't tell. These are all the angles that they have that they're showing us on the NBC Sports app. Carpaza has the headsets on, or the earpiece on, I should say. Let's see again. We're going to look at the replay. I think he's just... Ooh, it's tough to tell from that angle. The call is confirmed, and he is safe over at first. Ali honestly didn't really have anything to lose with that. So Roas does have his first three-hit game, and now Marble's going to come out, and that's going to be it for Gallegos. So how about this? Brandon Marsh is a solo homer. And then Garrett Stubbs gets on with an E4. And then Roas gets an infield single after Stubbs so, uh, stole a base. And we have another pitching change in the top of the ninth. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so that way you know when I go live. So the Phillies had two outs in the top of the ninth. Brandon Marsh is a solo homer to give the Phillies a 3-1 to one lead. Garrett Stubbs then got on with an error over at second. That was made by uh, was made, made by a Nolan Gorman. And then after that, Rojas beat out an infield single. After Stubbs stole for second, and there's runners over at the corners with two outs. Kyle Schwarber's up, and he looks at the strike on the outside part of the plate as Palante is in there to pitch. 
So Palante, Andre Palante, that is, has a 5.79 ERA and 4.2 innings of work. Kyle is 0 for 4 with a fly out, a pop out, a strikeout, and a ground out. He's done just about everything just to get out today except for a line out. No balls, one strike. Palante gets set at the letters, kick, steals the pitch, swing on the fly ball, hit out to deep center field, it's deep, it's going, and it will be caught just at the track. Ah, oh, barely stayed in the yard. And a nice catch out in center field, and that's what ends the inning. But we go to the bottom of the ninth. Phillies still lead a 3-1. to one. Jeff Hoffman will come in to pitch for the Phils. Mm. Has not been my night. <laughs> Thought he had a chance. Yeah, well, it's good, too. Huh, 77 people on here. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. The name is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. Hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button. Boy, I thought that that was going to go. Just stayed in the yard, though, and it was a good catch by Scott the second out in center. All right, so we go to the ninth. At least Jeff Hoffman has a two-run lead to deal with. You had us going there, JJ. Yep, I thought it was going to go, too. I did. I screwed up a lot today, but... There right, we go to the bottom of the ninth. Philly's trying to get a save right here from Hoffman. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell icon, and that way you'll know when I go live. I did. I thought it was going to go. Surprised that uh, Mike's not on here tonight. But hopefully he's doing good. Giants have a one nothing lead against the Nationals in the bottom of the first. And Blake Snell is making his debut, I believe. I'm pretty sure he's making his debut today. Hmm. All right. Mm. I'm going to watch the highlights to see if that was really a weak pop-up. What do you mean, if that was a weak pop-up? It, it wasn't a weak pop-up. <laughs> You're funny. Arenado's coming up to lead off the bottom of the ninth. Philly's got one run back in the top of the ninth inning. Here's Jeff Hoffman who has pitched four and a third scoreless innings. You're just messing with us. You're messing with me. So Arenado is up at the plate. The first pitch by Hoffman. It's low as that was headed towards the dirt. And Arenado stares at it for a ball. No one is one for three. He doubled in the second as a two seventy three average on the season. And four RBI. On ball, no strikes. Hoffman gets set at the belt, takes a quick breath, and the 1 0 pitch just outside for ball two. Decides to go with a slider at 86 miles per hour. Big battle here between Hoffman and Arenado. Two balls, no strikes, and Arenado will take the next pitch inside and high for ball three. I gotta start separating from the, the from the rest of the NL East, bro. It's only we're only like nine games into the season. It's still early. Three oh pitch that's in there for a strike, but yes, I mean for sure, like you wanna pack up on these wins for sure, but it's still early. Hoffman has got an Arenado out four times in his Career versus him. 3-1 pitch. There's a pop-up hit over towards foul ground, and it just lands behind the net. So that'll make the count full now at 3-2. and two. Hoffman from Latham, New York. With a .92 whip this season. Looking at the strikeouts, and they say that he's tied for 138th place among active pitchers. 
The 3-2 on the way to Arenado. Swing and a foul tip into the glove for strike three. Arenado strikes out and Hoffman wins the battle. So there's one out in the bottom of the ninth. Spencer Turnbull looking to get his second win today. And he's two outs away from doing so. It's 3-1 to one in the top of the ninth. Here comes Herrera. Wilmer his last time up, and he looks at a pitch that's low for ball one. So it's funny because Marsh, who hit the solo homer in the top of the ninth, allowed uh, Ivan Herrera. I mean, it wasn't really his fault. He tried to make the catch, but it bounced off his glove and went into the stands for a homer. Just got a little bit of some redemption there. Pitch is outside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. One out in the bottom of the ninth. Herrera at the plate. Hoffman on the mound. The pitch upstairs for ball three. Hoffman went one and two thirds of an inning in his last outing. Just allowed a walk and had a strikeout on 22 pitches. The 3 0 delivery. They say it's in there for a strike. Just on the inside corner. Alf Burleson is on deck. As Herrera steps out of the box and will take a practice swing as he called for time. Three balls, one strike. Base is empty. One out. And the next pitch is just outside for ball four. So there's a one out walk issued by Hoffman. Yeah, I said that it was Turnbull. Phil started to Spencer Turnbull. I said that. That one just missed. Miles Michaelis did start for the Cardinals. That is correct. Tying run coming up to the plate. And it is Alec Burleson, first pitch. It was a fastball right down the middle, and he fouls it back. Burleson grounded out twice. And also lined out, too. It's in 156 on the season with two RBI. One out in the bottom of the ninth. Hoffman getting ready to throw the 13th pitch of the inning. Here it comes. It's way outside and high. Good job by Stubbs to just get into a standing position to make that catch. I said it. Go back to the tape. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And here's the one to one. It's fouled over towards the third base side, and they'll find the seats. I'm just kidding, though. Don't go back to the tape. I did say it, though. He was answering my question. One ball, two strikes. It's okay. No, you're good. And the one-two pitch is a fly ball out to right field, and that's going to stay fair. And Castellanos will get over to it. But the runner is rounding third, and he will stay put over at third base. Stott just got it right in the infield, and they held him up over at third. I don't really know if uh, he would have scored or not. Herrera, that is, but that was definitely a hanging pitch that was just left out over the middle of the plate. And there's a one-out double with two runners in scoring position. So now Burleson will, uh, will come out, and they have a pinch runner now that's coming in for him. Let me make sure I get this correct. Can't see who it is. But it looks like it'll be Siani. So it's uh, Michael Siani, the 24-year-old, who will be the tying run over at second. And now the winning run is up at the plate, and it's Jordan Walker. It's a big jam here, and they're hoping that Hoffman can try to get out of it. Cardinals fans standing on their feet. This is the first time today that they've done that. 
One out in the bottom of the ninth. So Siani's over at second. And Herrera's at third. The first pitch is a fly ball hit out towards right field. Castellanos will make the catch. And the runner from third will tag up to score. And the runner from second goes over to third. So it is a sacrifice fly. And Miles Michaelis clapping along in the dugout. And it'll be a 3-2 to two ball game. So Walker gets a sack fly. And Burleson scores. Herrera goes over. Or sorry, Herrera scores. And Burleson goes over to third. And now Wynn is coming up to the plate. Two outs now in the bottom of the ninth. Tying run over at third. Here's Wynn, and he'll take the first pitch way outside for ball one. Mason Wynn hitting 308 on the season. He's one for three today. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Hoffman gets set just at the belt in the 1-0 pitch. That's a slider at the knees for a strike. So 1-1 one one is the count to Mason Wynn, and on deck is Scott. The pitch on the way, that's a strike just at the knees. Good slider at 85 miles per hour. And the Cardinals are down to their final strike. Man, that uh, home run by Marsh was huge. One ball, two strikes, and the one-two pitch. Ground ball hit through the hole for a base hit, and we have a tie ball game. An RBI single by Mason Wynn, and it's a brand-new game in the bottom of the ninth. So, Victor Scott will be coming up to the plate. That was a grounder just past the diving stop of Bone. Bone would not have been able to reach it. Nothing. Just a good piece of contact hitting. And the Cardinals have come back. It's the first pitch to Scott, and they'll foul this one off. The Phillies will have Trey Turner to lead things off in the top of the 10th if this goes to extra innings. No balls, one strike to win and the throwback over to first, not in time. Oh, and one is the count. Victor Scott at the dish. So Turnbull will not get the win either, that means. The 0-1 outside for ball one. The 23-year-old Victor Scott who stands at 5'10", 190 pounds. The 1-1 on the way. Splitter that misses outside for ball two. On deck is Brandon Donovan, who's 0 for 3 with a walk. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. It's 3-3 three to three in St. Louis. The 2-1 on the way. Swing and a miss on a slider at 85 miles per hour. Lots of Phillies fans here at Bush Stadium. Hoffman gets set again at the belt, and the 2-2 pitch is a grounder. Diving stop by Harper. Flip over to first. It is just in time, and Scott thought that he beat it out. Hoffman's walking back towards the dugout, and to be honest with you, I thought that, uh, that Hoffman should have just tied the bag a little bit sooner. Let's see again. Yep, you just got him by half a step. Just got him by half a step. He was a little bit slow to get his right foot on the bag. He had to extend his right foot. But regardless, we go to extra innings. Phillies tied 3-3 three to three against the Cardinals. Mm. 
All right. All right, let's do it. If you are new to the channel, the name, of course, is Jason Joseph, and this is Play by Play with JJ. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I appreciate you all very, very much. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah. All right. So we got Turner coming up. They got momentum. And we got the meat of the order coming up. Looks like a loss coming. It's a close game, man. Please, no more Hoffman tonight. I don't think Hoffman's going to pitch the next inning. <laughs> I don't. So we got Turner coming up. Turner, Harper, and Bohm. And again, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And hit that bell icon. So that way you know when I go live. The name is Jason Joseph. How many people do we have tuning in on here? I want to make sure I give you all a shout out tonight. For being here. That's pretty sick. I just wanted to watch the second half of the Kinect of the uh, UConn game. You know what I mean? Hoffman is gone. He went into the Dodgers. Or he went to the Dodgers. You won't see him in the Phillies uniform. <laughs> liar. Absolute liar. There's Christian Pache who's going to be pinch running now for Kyle Schwarber over at second. Daniel, you're a Dodgers fan? Since when are you a Dodgers fan? Ryan Helsley will be pitching for the Cardinals to start off this 10th uh, inning. It's not a save situation, but Turner has three singles today, including an RBI single that gave the Phillies at the time a 2 nothing lead in the top of the fifth. So Pache's over at second. And Turner looks at the strike. It's a slider at 87 miles per hour. I'm not a Dodgers fan. It was confirmed the other day that he went to the Dodgers. He's not in the Phillies uniform anymore. Well, he just pitched, so. No balls, one strike, and the 0-1 swing and a miss. I'm from L.A., says Daniel. No balls, two strikes, and the 0-2 is low. It was a slider at 87 miles per hour. Oh, boy. So, Helsley is playing in his sixth MLB season from uh, Oklahoma. He's 29 years old. So, Pache's over at second. He's the ghost runner. Probably should have mentioned that before. The 1 2 on the way, it's low and outside for ball two. Hoffman was not traded. <laughs> That's like the funniest thing I've ever heard. It really is. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Trey Turner. Pache leads off over at second. He came in the pinch run for Kyle Schwarber as the ghost runner. The 2-2 grounder hit over to third base. Arenado throws it over to first. And Turner is retired. So one out in the top of the 10th. And Bryce Harper is coming up now for the Phillies. They will intentionally walk Bryce Harper, though. They decide not to pitch to him and... Here comes Alec Bohm to the plate. Harper was uh, 0 for 3 today. He hit into two double plays. Did a walk, though, in the first. Bohm is 0 for 3 with a walk in the first. Philly's trying to hunt for some runs here. Helsley on the mound. One out, two runners on. Pache's at second, Harper's at first. The pitch to Boehm, grounder right through the hole for a base hit. It actually went down the line. It's a fair ball. Pache will score. And Bryce Harper gets on with an RBI double. Did I really say Bryce Harper? It's an RBI double by Alec Boehm. Wow. Four to three Phillies. 
And Bohm is able to take the lead. Right down the third base line. He just kept it fair. Good job by him. And now Bryson Stott's coming up. And Stott will foul the first pitch back. I really can't believe I did that. All right, so Stott's 0 for 4. He grounded out, he flied out, he lined out, and he also struck out too. Infield now playing in. We're in the top of the 10th, and there's one out. Helsley gets set above the letters, and the next pitch is a fly ball hit out towards right field. Walker has to back up, and he will, and he'll make the catch. And the runner from third will come in to score on the sacrifice fly. So Harper scores, and Stott gets the sack fly. Going over to third it is Alec Bohm. And now it's 5-3, to three, Phillies. So Bohm comes through and gives the Phillies a 4-3 to three lead. And Stott just got a fastball right down the middle. Just hit it out to right field and gets a sack fly. Here's Nick Castellanos at the dish. And he swings and misses at a slider at 91 miles per hour. It was on the outside corner. Castellanos 0 for 4 with two ground outs, a fly out, and a strike out as well. No balls, one strike, and the 0-1. There's a fly ball hit out towards left field. It's not that deep, though. And Donovan gets underneath it, and he'll catch the can of corn for out number three. Gregory Soto will come in for the bottom of the 10th. And the Phillies looking to hang on to a 5-3 to three lead. I'll be right back. Five to three scores. We go to the bottom of the tenth. Gregory Soto will be will be will be pitching the bottom of the tenth for the Phillies. He's had two holds this season in four games and has gone two and two thirds of an inning. So Rojas will be playing in center now as he comes in for the Phillies. So. Marsh, Rojas, Castellanos. Rojas was actually out there in center field. I, was, I forgot, though, that, that uh, Schwarber was the one that was literally the ghost runner, but he's the DH. So we're in the bottom of the 10th. The first pitch is in there for a strike. So Donovan's at the plate, and that means that Scott will be the pinch runner, Vince Scott, or sorry, the ghost runner, to start off the bottom of the 10th. Brendan Donovan is 0 for 3. Top of the lineup for the Cardinals. They're actually 0 for 11 today. Soto looks back over at second to keep Scott in check. And the 0-1 is just on the outside corner for a strike. No balls. Two strikes to Brendan Donovan. 
Ten seconds left on the pitch clock. Soto gets set at the belt, and the 0-2 is up high and outside for ball one. One and two is the count. Soto gets set again and fires a slider that misses badly for ball two. You don't really like the ghost runner? Makes the game go by quicker. In the regular season, I like it. Two balls, two strikes, send the 2-2 on the way. That one is inside and high. Soto, man, look out below. Donovan had to dodge out of the way of that one. I'd rather play 18 innings. <laughs> the reflexes of Stubbs, man, that's crazy. 3-2 on the way. There's a fly ball hit out towards left field. It's going back towards the track, and Marsh leaps up to make the catch in front of the wall. What a play by Brandon Marsh. And there's one away. Nice catch by Marsh. Just in front of the fence. Spoken like a baseball purist. <laughs> Marsh did a good job of just backpedaling. He leaped up. He made the catch. And there's one away. Now here comes Paul Goldschmidt. One out still. Scott's over at second, and Goldschmidt takes the first pitch inside for in this at-bat here. That was a long fly out over to left. Soto's playing with fire. I agree with that. The pitch to Goldschmidt is way outside for ball one. Goldie's gone 0 for 4 today. Made some really good plays, though, over at first base, defensively speaking. Two balls, no strikes, and the next pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Spencer Turnbull pitched, uh, started off this game for the Phillies and pitched really well, only allowed two hits and had six strikeouts. And was in line to get the win. The 2-1 is outside for ball three, and that was until the ninth inning. Phillies were up 3-1, to one, and good thing that Marsh had a solo homer because that really did matter. That was an extra insurance run, and they needed that. 3-1 to Goldschmidt. Line drive over the head of Turner into left field for a hit. Marsh will throw it back in towards second, and Scott stops over at third, and the tying run is over at first. The winning run is now up at the plate. So Hoffman is the one that blew the save in the ninth. And Soto now in a tough spot here. So Goldschmidt finally gets his first hit of the day. Nolan Arenado now waits in the on-deck circle. And Gorman is due up. He has flied out twice. He has also struck out and grounded out too. And has gone 0 for 4. Runners at first and third. It's Scott and Goldschmidt. And Gorman takes a strike on the outside corner. This is a lefty-on-lefty lefty matchup. Boy, the Phillies could certainly use a double play here. No balls, one strike. Soto gets set at the belt, and the 0-1 high and away for ball one. Arenado waits on deck. He's one for four with a double and two strikeouts. The pitch. Good pitch by Soto. It was on the outside edge of the plate at 98 miles per hour for a strike. So the count is now one and two. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock. Goldie over at first. And Scott over at third. The one-two pitch, swing and a miss. Soto gets the second out. It's his first strikeout of the game. And the Cardinals down to their final batter. Their final out.
So everything's up to Nolan Arenado. He doubled in the second. First pitch, it's outside for ball one. That slider missed by just a whisker. One ball, no strikes to Nolan Arenado. And the next pitch, line drive foul over towards the right field side. So that'll make the count even at one apiece. What's going on, Richard? How you doing, man? The one one on the way. Ground ball foul over towards the third base side. And the Cardinals. Oh, well, they're down to their final strike. Arenado has never faced Soto before. The one two on the way. It's low and a good. Job by Stubbs to block that one. It's two to two in the count. He's never faced Soto before in his career. Scott at third, Goldschmidt at first. We're in the bottom of the 10. Phillies lead at five to three. Two outs, two balls, two strikes to Aaron out of the two two. Swing and a miss. And the Phillies beat the St. Louis Cardinals and win 5-3. to three. It took extra innings, but Soto gets the save. And Hoffman, even though he blew the save, he gets charged with the win. Brandon Marsh and the Philadelphia Phillies all celebrating. Thanks to Alec Bohm's go-ahead RBI double. And the sack fly by Bryson Stott. That was the difference of the game. And Soto got into a jam. They got two big strikeouts to end the ball game, and the Phillies take game one of this three-game set against the Cardinals. I was going to do a post-game show tonight, but um, I really, I really, really want to tune into the to the UConn game. So I'm going to get going. I will see you all tomorrow for the Sixers. Thank you all so so much for tuning in. Spencer Turnbull is the player of the game, in my opinion. Six innings, six strikeouts, two hits allowed. Just one walk. Pitched really, really well. I'm going to get going. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button on the way out. I'll catch you all later. Lila Tove and good night.